Hello, friends, and welcome again to another Street Fighter Duel video. So, with the release of new units in this game and the many formations that we can do and the many options that we have from free to play to pay to win, I'll be showing you and sharing with you the teams that are reliable and the ones that I've been using as free to play to complete my story mode, my towers, and continue uh, playing this game and advancing in chapters. Now, these teams will be consisting of five teams or uh, the lineups are from five teams. You can use them as on four teams or three teams and pick whatever you want and adjust them to the way that it's more comfortable to you. So let's hop in and talk to, about them and pay attention. These teams are the teams that I'm currently using. It doesn't mean that these are the best ones and you should never use anything else. If you have better units, if you build more SST characters, you can use them instead of the main carries or the main supports if you have other legendaries as well. They apply, I'll be mentioning them if I don't forget in this video. Let's hop in and I will be showing you. Now, um, I just uh, cleared chapter 41 specifically when i unlocked vega or uh, visgondi vega to ss helped me a lot actually and replaced some units that i've been using and now i'll be talking what i was using before and what i use now since they told me that he's really busted and i tried him he's really busted at ss and i need one more copy to get him to that triple s and unlock his six out of six cars and he'll be unstoppable so i'll be showing you the teams that i used throughout the entire previous chapter as free to play with no mercenaries and in the end, I used the mercenary basically at the last fight to use because it will take it was taking me a lot of time. I could use it, I could I could finish it without a mercenary, but it will take more time. So I decided not to and show you the potential if you built that unit, if you have it as free to play, or if you're a low spender, or even if you're a spender and sleeping on that unit. So let's talk about the lineups that we have. First of all. Now, this is not particularly in order, but I will be telling you the toughest ones that I have and the easiest ones that are consistent throughout the whole campaign for me, starting with the Dalsim and a Jailbreak Cody team. Now, this team is one of my highest burst consistent team that I have a stun lock on that is very perfect. The star of this team, other than Dalsim, of course, is Jailbreak Cody. Yes, Jailbreak Cody is a B-rank character that can go to level 160 at most and you can have him at S plus only. Now, what you need to know is that Jailbreak Cody is very good and you don't need to build gears on him. Actually, you can slap Guile gears on him and that's it. You can just go to Guile team, remove the gears of Guile, borrow them for a minute, clear the stage or this uh, fight uh, versus any unit and then come back and remove them and give them back to Gal. This is one option that you can do. You can use Able Gear, you can use anybody else from the power faction. So, what is his main element here? And it is his skill, his first skill, which is stuns the unit from the back line, so you can grab somebody from the back line. What we basically do is, when the enemy starts their animation, if they are in the back line and you can't reach them actually with any other unit, because most of the stunners are stunners probably for the front line or you can stun the unit in front of you. But if they're in the back line, you want to try to get them. We use mostly Bizangi for that. And there's another option. There's are, there are a lot of options. I'll be talking about them and telling you how I do that actually. Maybe if you didn't know, now you know. So. Jailbreak Cody, just grab somebody from behind. When they start their combo, he interrupts them, stun them, grab them to themselves or in front of them, but you will deal less damage when you start this combo right uh, like this, and it will consume zero combo meter. It means it's a free skill to use. And then you can continue. Now, one of the units that I love to play in this lineup, which is Able. Why Able? Because Able will use his shields, and now you're tanky, you're buffed, nobody will die on your lineup. And this lineup have more than many things, I'll be talking about them in, right now and explaining to you in depth why this team is consistent and it works with each other. Many factors, not only just Jailbreak Cody. The C2 of Summer Yang. C2 of Summer Yang is one of the best skills in the game, in my opinion, as me. I'm not talking in general. Many people have skills that they uh, say that they are the best skills in the game. I don't disagree with them and I don't agree with them. Everybody have their opinion. In my opinion, one of the best skills in the game as an active skill is the C2 of Summer Yang since he apply armor break up to 5 stacks and with every successful stack that you apply of armor break 
you're gonna get combo meter or 50 points of combo meter if I'm, not, if I'm not wrong that will increase your combo meter so you can go back to back back to back now this is for free you can start the first one the second one you can start it also with free if you have Kami and Vega EX one of the EX moves that I like to use here since Dawson needs Yoga Tower to inflict so much damage and he's one of the best AOE damage dealer as a normal faction as a fire faction of course, Flame Aidon is the best one, but he comes in second, or that's what was meta actually before that. So, you will eliminate the entire team, one of the best AoE damage dealers, and it ramps up really quick. And it will allow you, the Kami and Vega AX, to have another free combo meter, so you can apply the shields with Abel, get more combo meter with this dude, and use the C3 of Dalsim again. Now, if you don't want to use the C1 of Abel, you can use the C1 of Jailbreak Cody as well, which is one of the skills that is also great in this game. His skill will remove or uh, give the enemy less accuracy or uh, decrease their accuracy by 30% for 8 seconds, which is absolutely insane. I will be explaining why. And it will inflict dodge down, 8% dodge down. It means they can't evade your attacks. Why is accuracy so good when you remove it from your enemy? It's because these two units, Summer Yang and Dalsim, have high dodge rate because they are agility units. And if you check the agility units, their gears give them dodge and they will have a lot of dodge. If we st check the stats of Dalsim, he have 98% dodge, which will only pressure counter that and remove the dodge and kill you. But he will be most likely not being affected with any uh, kind of damage, even if he have the shields or not of Able. This will help you evade the team more and more. This is why I thought about this team very much. Summer Yang is also an agility unit with high dodge rate. Not as much as uh, Dalsim, but 90% is still a very good dodge rate. Now, the only thing that I use, I, I recommend everybody to use, is when you successfully interrupt with a Jabra Cody from the start of the battle, you can apply the EX move of Kami and Vega, start a combo immediately quickly, and let uh, uh, Dalsim stand on his uh, Yoga Tower, accumulate a little bit of stacks, and you can start again with Jabra Cody and interrupt the second rotation of the enemies, and then there you end it. Everybody will die, or if they will not die, it will take them a little bit uh, time for them to die by the burn damage that Dawson did. Absolutely insane uh, lineup, very, very successful. I always use DiCaprio on him. She have a high stats of attack. She can give him attack if you have her at five stars and she will drop into the battle and finish a unit if they are below some certain of HP, which is really good as a finisher unit from assist position. Feilong is always a necessity on this lineup because burn damage or flame damage will do more and more. Let's talk about the second team. The second team, it's the basic vanilla team, which is two units actually which is Guile and B Zangief. They work perfectly together. B Zangief gathered them all together. Guile hit them with the C3 and it's a GG. Everybody have armor break stacks because of that and everybody are stunned. So they will take for one second a lot of damage. So you need to stun them and immediately press the C3. Now you can play any C1 that you want. I prefer this lineup, two units from the same faction and I recommend highly Zangief. Zangief has a lot of survivability skills. Plus, because they are wind, so they take more damage from flame da uh, fr flame damage or flame uh, uh, the flame faction. So if you want to mitigate that, you can use uh, Zangief since his passive will protect them from that. I use Kami always on Zangief, on B Zangief because his auto attack are a trigger. So he will always trigger Kami and Kami will jump in, deal some damage and add armor break to the enemy. So Guile will deal even more damage. Now I love using Guile with Guy as an assist when you kill somebody on the enemy lineup guile will get a crit buff and attack buff from guy and guy will in, uh, just do his shadow slash or jump into the field deal a little bit of more damage so you can continue back to back with your rotations i love using elena because she will give me combo meter at the start of the battle plus she will heal my team and my lineup and if zangief dies i can start with her use the c1 of him use the c2 of her and the c3 of guile C2 give her more defensive to my lineup other than survivability with the HP, with the healing. Really, really good. I recommend using uh, the Tanuki uh, Whirl uh, because it will give armor break and buff your attack. If you want to use anything else, that's up to you. Any EX move works with this lineup. You don't even need to worry about EX moves. Now, the third team. And this team is also one of my best uh, lineups, which is very consistent and it always grants me the kill or always grants me the win in the end. It never fails for me in whatever scenario I'm playing it, specifically because you will always hit the unit or most likely always hit the unit 
that they will start the super. Since the enemy, when they start their super combo, anybody who uses the super combo will dash a little bit to the front, except units, somebody like uh, Jury. Jury stays in her place. Or somebody like uh, Poison. Poison dash back and she will not start her combo and dash front or go into a step forward. She will step backward. So this is a little bit of a downfall for this. It's hard to achieve versus these units. But for Jury it works actually, but you don't want to stun Jury, you want to stun somebody that comes after Jury with a C1 because Jury will not be stunned if you if she uses her super. So keep that in mind. So why do I use this? What I'm talking about pushing? Why does it synergize really Honda and Fashion Blanca and uh, uh, Chun-Li together? Now you can play always in the low uh, tiers or in chapter like 39 and chapter 38. I was playing Akuma, even at SS I was playing Akuma. Akuma can deal a lot of damage and you can one shot the back line or one shot the front line with Akuma and Chun-Li which is absolutely insane and you can use any unit that you feel uh, fit. I was using somebody here like Bison or somebody like a Trigger like Eva Ryu and I was using Honda at uh, the back line or in tag position. But since now that we have Summer Elena, Summer Elena is protective, she can jump and tank when you unleash a combo and plus she heals and she will buff you and it, she will heal you absolutely crazy uh, trigger unit now of course i love to play fashion blanca fashion blanca is the main carry here in this lineup and he will deal the damages that you like so i start with fashion blanca at almost 82 seconds or 81 seconds it's the minimum point that you want to start with or the maximum point that you want to start with if you're faster than your opponent and if they don't have chun li that is critting on their lineup that will uh mess with the combo meter of the enemy because if she crits they gain more combo meter and if we crit with Chun-Li, we gain more combo meter, even if the enemy is faster than us, I've done it before. So I, the battle starts, Chun-Li hits auto attack, she gives me a combo meter and I can start and I can immediately stun them with Honda. But in the normal cases, you start with uh, Fashion Blanca, he will let everybody else stack in one position, all of them on top of each other. And then they will start their combo. The one that will start with their combo, the, he, they will slightly get in the front of the other two units on the main lineup. There where I use Honda to stun them and then I use the C2 of Fashion Blanca, then the C3 of uh, uh, Chun-Li and when Chun-Li crits and you gain back the combo meter, it's non-stop. It, I don't stop anymore, I just continue the same rotation, Fashion Blanca, Honda, Fashion Blanca and Chun-Li and Summer Elena does her stuff. Now I love to use anything that buff crits or buff a little bit of damage. As an EX move, you can use any EX move that you feel fit so it doesn't have any restrictions. Absolutely crazy lineup and very successful. Now, my fourth lineup, which is the lineup that is the newest one for me, which I was using Viper instead of him here, and Viper works, or Flame Aidan sometimes I was using him here, also works perfectly with Gormagala Ken, since you grab everybody else from the tag position, so the four lineup are there, Flame Aidan just goes and hit them and burns everybody through time, Able or Suit Able will keep you alive and you can use anybody in tag position that can stun will help you. Now, why I love to play Gormagala Ken? Of course, you can use any other trigger character. Like, you, you can use Summer Ibuki here. She doesn't work as well or as uh, as good as Gormagala Ken, but you can use her. You can use Eva Ryu. Now, Eva Ryu works perfectly here with this lineup as well. He silence, he reduces combo meter and deals insane amount of damage when you deal your combos. Now Gorma Galakan, I love to play him and I was playing him when he was A rank, when he was SS rank and when he was S plus rank. Any type of uh, rank that he was, I was playing him only because he stuns with his super combo. When you start with his super combo, he hits the frontline enemy. If the frontline enemy is the one to use his super, you can immediately stun them and continue your combo meter with a C1 and another C2 or another C2, C1 from the tag position and C2 from here and continue with, it with the C3. Now, the other good thing that I love with this team, I play other characters and the most stable one that I play is Dudley. Dudley with his C1 jumps in, stuns the frontline. If the frontline, even if it's a C1 from a different character that drops into the battle, wanna hit you with a C1, you can drop him with his C1, he will stun them and you can continue the combo meter. Now, of course, I use DJ sometimes with his C2 if I wanna start with a C1 from Suit Able and not his C2. So I can start with uh, Visconde Vega, C1 from Suit Able, then C2 from uh, DJ. With good timing, you can stun the frontline unit with the last hit of DJ. Very hard to master with DJ, but still works. 
And lastly, one of my options is using Makoto. Makoto with her C2 is absolutely good. It's an AOE with a 20% chance to stun the enemy. I think it's 20% chance. Let's check so I won't be fully wrong. The C2, it has a 20% base chance to stun the enemy. So you're gonna drop and it's an AOE. So you can stun the backline if the backline is the one that you wanna stun with the C2 of Makoto. Hopefully you'll stun them. Needs a lot of retries actually. I've done it many times before. But it requires a little bit of retries to do that perfectly. So if you have Nero, if you spent and had money and played and paid for Nero, I recommend using Nero. You can use Suit Able in the back line or you can use Nero in the front line. Nero is a better tank actually with the silence for story mode and for survivability mechanic. You can play Nero here. You can start with his super, he will silence the enemies and that's it, GG, it will stop. Or you can use him for his C1 in this position. He will drop with the C1, gather everybody and interrupt them. Doesn't work on all the stages. Some stages are still bugged and it doesn't work. But it works mainly on all of the story mode and the towers. So keep that in mind. The fifth team. So the fifth team is the one, the one that I changed lastly. It's the same team. It was the immortal team that I was playing. I was playing Witch Jury here. And I'm playing these lineup actually with Rose. Now sometimes I use Viper, sometimes uh, Flame Adon, and many times I was using uh, uh, Poison. Poison works perfectly here as well. Why Poison works here? Because when they start their combo, if it hits only Bison or single target unit, if their uh, lineup is a single target unit that will hit your first lineup, you can start with three, three Poison. And the other ones will be silenced, so you can continue your rotation, your combos perfectly. C1 from her, C2 from her, C3 from her, or C1 from her, C2 from ro uh, from uh, sweet po uh, from poison, normal poison again, and C3 once from which jury, which jury can carry this team. Now, because we have Visgon de Vega, and I'm playing this lineup, this could be immortal playing this lineup this way. So. If you have Witch Jury on Fire Aedon, which I recommend Witch Jury, if you have a replacement for her as an assist for Fire Aedon, you can play her on Visconti Vega, works like a charm there. But on Vega team, I have Suit Able healing him, I don't need so much healings with him, I want him to get low, it doesn't matter for me, he will deal the damage that I want. For Flame Aedon, he becomes immortal when Witch Jury is on him. And how is that? You start the combo at the start of the battle, first of all, uh, faster than your enemies, if you have fast chant on bison or on somebody fast, I have it on bison so I always start or I pick the side, I pick my enemies that I can start. If they have only single target units, it's a GG anyway because they will hit only bison and your entire team will be alive if they don't take a hit or uh, they bypass bison. So I start my combo and I use the C3 of uh, Flame Aedon. The wall of fire will stay underneath the enemies and burn them and cook them slowly, slowly, which will be perfect. Now, if you invested if you're free to play i have many free to play uh, uh, friends on my friend list that build completely max out this dude use him like this now this lineup is the exact lineup that i use for bossing as free to play now of course if you have flame chun li you can play flame flame chun li with this team and apply uh, flame penetration on the enemies they will die immediately faster than that but this rotation this lineup requires you this uh, amount of skill zero Zero skills. You don't need any skills. It needs only retries. You start with Rich Honda, C1 from Street Poison, C2 from uh, Rose, and C3 from Fire Aedon. And I bet you, if not from the first rotation, the second rotation that you do, your the entire enemy will die. I will be showing you this in my final battle against the boss in the chapter 41. And it's against a Bison team. It took me only two tries to destroy that and it was fun actually, it didn't take me so much time. I was doing it with my A rank E Honda, but he dies, he doesn't survive the blast of the enemy Bison. This is why I used the one from my friend Islam Santos. It's a mercenary that you can borrow from other unit, from other friends on your lineup. So if you want to use him, you can use him, but it works with Bison. It was working with Bison, but it was taking me tries and it went over 10 minutes of me retrying and then Bison stays in the end of the fight against my Flame Aedon and Bison and kills both of them. And I was that close to finish it, but I was like, I'm not having it anymore. So I went and used uh, Rich Honda and it worked perfectly. Now, 
This team is so flexible that sometimes I use even Viper here because it will give me more shields and it will give me more combo meters and I go back to back, back to back. I can start with her, C1 with her, C2 from uh, Viper again and C3 with Flame Aidon. And that's it, it's a GG. You wipe the enemy, you kill the lineup and you proceed. But with Rose, it's more survivability for me. You can use anybody than Viper here. I keep Viper here because I remember that she's on this lineup because sometimes you play other teams and other lineups. Now these lineups, you don't need to play them in this order in particular. You can replace them, swap them, play them any way you want. This is how I played them in the last chapter. So I continued and I have them in this position. So you can swap them to the point that it's suitable. If you can't reach anybody and you want to stun everybody, you can play B Zangiv on the lineup. If it's the first unit, you can play Honda. Also the first unit or the, the, the backline unit, you can play Jailbreak Cody. So you don't, you have options here to do whatever you want. And in this lineup, most likely, even if you don't stun correctly, uh, uh, Visgon de Vega will destroy everybody. You will kill your enemies because he's that good. So these are the lineups. I'll be showing you now the replay for the final battle for chapter 41 and uh, we'll be talking about it so let's get into it so here we are this was the chapter 4140 uh five teams uh these are the five teams and i'm still playing the same exact teams as you see my last team is the bison team but in the end i changed it for uh the rich honda rich honda was working fine so if it's gone de vega ss plus gormagal again ss plus today he will be uh triple s and that's how we start. Normally we start it. And as you see, I started with Gorma Gullican. Now, why I start with Gorma Gullican? Because I wanted to stun my enemies. It didn't work. It didn't work perfectly. And I start with him. This is how I'm playing him. This is how I'm playing him. Just fully burst, no stuns, nothing. And here, we charmed Hugo. So we can he can tank a little bit. This is why the charm is a little bit good in this lineup. As you see, full HP. And uh, we're getting healed and we're getting everything. And now Mario Makoto died here, but it's okay because we have only one unit surviving. And that's it, it's a GG with the, with everything that I have, he will die immediately. And that's it, that's it. The MVP here was uh, Vigon de Vega, of course, and Gorma Gala can add it. Now, the next lineup, I suffered a little bit here because uh, it was Guy, my, my the nemesis that I hate mostly. Guy in tag position is the the most hardest and difficult uh enemy because uh, uh if he if he just uh, stays for the end of the battle and you can interrupt him he wipes your team he kills everybody this is how bad he is now you need to time kami as soon as you see her animation you want to drop the c2 of zangief and stop her or any stun that you can hit her with and you're gonna see another kami uh versus my uh fashion blanca that I stop her every time that she does her super. Absolutely annoying, Kami. You need to stop her perfectly. And as you see, I'm not even chunking that much damage unless I get these armor breaks on them. And I go back to back, back to back, killing them one after another. And here we go. My guy dropped from the tag position and hit uh, the fashion blood uh, or B Zangief. And now I interrupt this guy before he kills my uh, my lineup because this is how hard and tough it is he just goes back to the back line and try to kill me and here we one shot him we got a crit lucky for us i dispelled him just because i didn't want him to kill everybody else on my lineup if i didn't kill him right here and that was happy dandy now with this lineup and we need to catch guile guile is the boss that we're fighting now guile is interesting as well because he's stay behind. So I need to start immediately, grab him, put him between Viper and T-Hawk. He does his auto attack. He goes back to the back line and then I can grab him. And as you see, stun, interrupt, and I can continue my rotation. This was the strategy why I started immediately at the start of the battle with my Jailbreak Cody. Every synergy, every lineup, you need to think about it a little bit or try. So here we got him again, but this time I couldn't interrupt him. So I played with the able shields and the able shields saved me. The T-Hawk died, so they couldn't continue their combo meter. Now again, they have Viper, so I need to eliminate her immediately. And Flame Aidon, as you see, with his auto attacks, he just eliminates everybody. So I need to kill him as much as or as fast as possible. And this is what I did because the counter attack hurts a lot. Now, the fourth lineup, which is the fashion 
uh, Blanca team, which is I love very much. As you see, Charming Dudley. I retried like six times until he didn't kill me. And as you see, Kami starts, Honda interrupts her. That's an interrupt, perfect interruption. And then I go C2 from Fashion Blanca, C3 from uh, uh, Chun Li. And I continue immediately with Fashion Blanca. I start my rotation. I did a full rotation and then I get combo meter for another rotation. So I start again. This is the spam uh, lineup. And here I stun Kami again, one more time. And then it's a GG. Even with flame damage reduction from their B, uh, from their Zangief, I still manage to wipe them and deal that much of damage. Also because I'm having Wildfire on my lineup. And Wildfire is a very broken uh, buff in this game. Kami missed my units because he was back. Honda is still alive. And I'm using him. I'm trying to spam and full interruption. Great interruption on Kami. So we had three successful interruption. One wasn't successful and that's it. And I continue again and again. And I'm waiting for her to jump so I can interrupt her again. It wasn't successful. But we killed Zangief. She's the only one surviving. I have Fashion Blanca and she's already burned. That was a good run actually. We've done a better run than this because I retried this stage many times. Now the last stage I've been trying as I told you with uh, Bison. It didn't work or it was working but taking so much time to, success, uh, to be successful. So I started with Rich Honda and as I start the battle. Rich Honda, Street Poison, uh, Rose and then Fire Adon and I continue the same rotation. Look at these damages. I used the Crazy Potato EX move, absolutely perfect. I didn't even need to use the Virgil EX move, but I used it anyway. Rose died, I can use the C2 off uh, my uh, my uh, Rich Honda and that's it. I didn't even need to use the, the last combo, which is absolutely perfect and this is how we did it. 4140 cleared. And yeah, we get the rewards. We advance into the, the, the 42 chapter and this 42 chapter is also relatively easy. It will not take that much. So I will be doing it the same way that I did this one. This time I'm not going to use mercenaries since I have my Visconti Vega very built. Since I have uh, my Gorma Galakan now that will go to triple S as you see here. We can claim this one. Now I'll be doing another video doing summonings and showing you my uh, the Gorma Galakan. And that was it for this video. I hope you have different strategies, different lineups. If you have different lineups and different strategies, mention them in the comment. Tell me what's your best teams to use. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, we thank you for watching. And as always, stay frosty. Peace. Time to fight. Time to fight.